Today we've got brand new gameplay from Gears of War Judgment and the greatest animation you've never seen. Plus learn what it's really like to be a zombie and we're gonna talk games with Cliff Blazinski. X-Play starts right now. Welcome to X-Play, I am Blair Herter. And I am Morgan Webb. Coming up, we're gonna get some FaceTime with the recently unemployed Cliff Blazinski. Pretty sure his first three weeks off are very different than mine are gonna be. <laughs> Dude Huge is here to talk games and run the X-Play Challenge. Then we're gonna show you what it's really like to be a zombie. It's not all grim and boring like the Walking Dead television show. Plus, I'm gonna go on an awkward date with a character from Soul Calibur. Remember when that fighting game series was actually relevant? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and later, you don't want to miss the animation brilliance that is Cobra and Mongoose. Not only that, it's a triumph of writing and voice acting, truly our finest hour. Brilliance and triumph are the words we're using with this? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's cool. But first, it's time for some good old-fashioned locust killing. Early next year, you're going to be able to see another side of the Gears of War universe. Judgment actually takes place before the Gears trilogy, and it features a ton of new multiplayer modes. Here's a preview. Graduation is only a few days away, and the troops of Kilo Squad are salty. They're ready to eat their own guts and ask for seconds. The coalition of ordered governments doesn't want robots, they want killers. They want to build indestructible men, men without fear. And that is just about the only quote from Full Metal Jacket that isn't so loaded with profanity we can't air it. Gears of War Judgment seems worthy of such a heavy intro. The game is shaping up beautifully, as you can see from this brand new footage. You're looking at our most anticipated feature, Overrun Mode. Basically, this time you'll get to play as the bad guys in competitive play. It's sort of like a combination of Horde Mode and Beast Mode. Overrun allows you to play as locust scum like the Corpser, but in a true five-on-five -five fight to the death. So far, it looks like it's gonna be a blast. We've spent the last year practicing our Cantus healing skills. There's another new mode that we're excited about, and it's called Free For All. It's the first time in the series that the competition is basically every man for himself. It definitely makes the action more chaotic and fast-paced, but hopefully in a good way. The new maps also look pretty spiffy, with plenty of nooks and crannies to explore. We're not done yet! Like so many forequels, this is technically a prequel to the series. Instead of following Marcus Phoenix and Zombie Dominic, you play as the members of Kilo Squad right after Emergence Day. Which is fine, because this guy has much cooler hair. Does that sound about right to you, Lieutenant Baird? Remember, tonight you pukes will sleep with your rifles. Hey, I guess that's another Full Metal Jacket quote I can say on TV. If you pre-order the game, you'll get an exclusive weapon, the classic Hammer Burst. It's an assault rifle that, we have to admit, looks pretty enjoyable. Unfortunately, you won't find Gears of War Judgment under your Christmas tree, because it's not out until March 19th of next year. Now, who's your squad leader, scumbag? If you're looking to meet that special someone, I would not advise blind dates. They never work out, especially if you end up with someone who's more interested in acquiring souls rather than your heart. I learned that lesson in this X-Play Classic. So, I've never been on a blind date before. Take this! Oh, thanks. What can I get you to? You know, I'll just have a salad. That's all? I'm disappointed. Oh, well, I had a late lunch. And for the pirate? I will feast on your soul. <laughs> so, what do you think about the election? Pray while you can. There you go. Anything else? Your soul makes a poor meal. Keep the check handy. <laughs> Come with me to hell. <laughs> uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> Offer your soul to me. What is it with you and souls? Come on, show me. Boy, look at the time. Taste my pain. Uh, no, thanks. I'm done. You can finish it. Shut up. Look, the pirate thing. It's kind of working for you, but those dead, soulless eyes of yours one day will make some other lady very, very happy. But you and me, um, I don't think it's gonna work out. Bye-bye. Ah, familiar cries. Now, come back to me! Word for word, Morgan and I's breakfast this morning. Word for word, so eerie. Coming up, we'll get some face time with Cliff Blazinski and see if his platforming is as good as his lancering and his looks in the X-Play Challenge. <laughs> He's off camera creeped out right now because I said that. Plus, we're gonna run out the clock with two classics from the vault, so stay with us. This portion of X-Play is fueled by Mountain Dew. Gaming is better with Mountain Dew, so unlock and load double XP with Halo 4. Just get your hands on some Mountain Dew, find the code, and go to DewXP.com. Enter the code and dominate Halo 4 multiplayer. Unlock and load with double XP from Mountain Dew, Halo 4 double XP, and a chance to win other prizes at DewXP.com. T4 now presents the following public service announcement, paid for by the American Association for the Undead. Hi, uh, my name is David Nyman, um, and I work here at Accounts Payable, uh, where I'm a senior associate. Mm, great work. Um, I've, uh, I've been dead for 19 or, 19 or 20 years, maybe 18 years. Um, I was actually trampled at a, at a Wham! concert uh, I've got the album here. Love those guys even even after death. After my uh, incident, they let me come back to work, which which I was really happy about because it's tough for you know someone like me to find work. The thing I want people to know is that I'm a regular normal guy who happens to be dead. I put my pants on one leg at a time, just like everybody else. Popular misconceptions. Um, Eating brains. Uh, you know, everyone thinks it's all about brains, but it's not just about brains. I like corn. I like smoothies. It's gonna look really good on you. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> I want to be treated with dignity and with respect, just like anybody would. Is there a piece of my face falling off? Gross. Dignity and respect is, that's, that's what I want. Zombies. They're people too. <gasps> Dead people. Hey, Bob. Well, all right. More you know. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you've heard, but a pillar of the video game community recently stunned the industry by announcing that they were going away. And it's not us. Nope. <laughs> right? Nobody was stunned. You guys get it? It was actually former design director at Epic Games, Cliff Blazinski. And when he wasn't making games, Cliff would actually come by the offices for stuff like this. I can't believe we made it out of there alive. Explain to me again why the X-Play Deep Storage has death traps. <gasps> Blazinski. Again, Morgan and Adam, we see there's nothing you'll possess that I cannot take away. Damn it, again! <laughs> Joining us now is the man himself, the unemployed <laughs> Cliff Blazinski. Yay! I mean, we have to ask you, are you currently collecting unemployment? What's uh, it like I was you? thinking about filing as kind of a grand experiment, but it <laughs> probably wouldn't go over very well. No, no, I can understand that. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. So uh, you've been, uh, how long have you been gone from Epic now? God, it's been since like mid-October. Yeah, and uh, I, I had a, like three or four weeks of being the guy in office space where I had the bathrobe on and like sleeping 12 <laughs> hours a night and just like doing absolutely nothing. And I started to get a little bit bored. And then my phone started ringing a lot. And I just started meeting with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Honestly, just meeting with uh, developers, meeting with publishers, just to see what could possibly happen, of which I can tell you nothing right now. Yeah, but I can tell you from your Twitter feed was basically like all of my bucket lists 
in the last two months. Like, yeah. oh, Cliff's doing something I'll never do in my life. That's cool. So happy for him. Well, my favorite, <laughs> my, my my favorite moment was when I uh, went to Paris to visit Ubisoft and to, of course, to go to the Louvre and be in Paris because it's friggin' Paris. Yes. And uh, a mysterious box shows up at the hotel and it's a cell phone from Ubisoft that I didn't solicit that just had one phone number on it. I felt like Liam Neeson in Taken. That is like, the oh. best. Yeah, so I called the phone number and I just talked to them and we wound up meeting up and it was cool, but it was like this kind of covert ops moment that was really amazing. Oh my God. I like it. I hope that somebody recruits me in that manner. Oh, with that hair, I think they will. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's very smooth. Thank I'm sleeping. <laughs> Guys, okay. Um, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about your time at Epic. Is, is there something that really stands out as something that you're the most proud of? Uh, well, the thing is, is uh, I don't really want just the whole chainsaw gun to be my legacy, you know? I and mean, it's pretty cool, though. It was cool, you know, like, <laughs> whenever somebody puts, like, the number of, like, top 50 weapons in video games, there's, like, the Halo sword, there's, like, the Lancer, like, it's, it's there with everything else, sure. the Doom BFG, and that's really flattering, but a lot of these kids who, you know, they only have been playing games for the last however many years, they, they think that's the only thing they ever did. They forget about Jazz Jackrabbit, Unreal, Unreal Tournament, that I worked on things like Bulletstorm, a little bit of Shadow Complex and things like that. Um, moving forward, you know, I would hope to work on something new and fresh and kind of redefine my legacy, you know? Like, you know, Steven Spielberg didn't want to be known for just E.T., right? right? So he made a lot of different kinds of things. People forget you were at Epic for a very, very long time, and I assume that part of the reason, if not most of the reason you left, was because you just want to do other things. I'd been working with them since I was 17 years right. old. It, it, it's time for a fresh start. Right. You know, and it, it, I'll start a new studio maybe at some point. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when and with who. So I have kind of a, a conceptual question for you about sort of the theory of game design. Do you mm -hmm. think that games are getting easier? Uh, I actually do. So um, one of the things that my wife and I bought was a Superboy. And it's not like a rapper or anything like that. It's one of those kind of like... <laughs> it uh, should be. It really should. <laughs> it's one of those like self-contained SNESs that you can buy at like Urban Outfitters. It's probably meant to be ironic, but I thought it was really cool. Mm -hmm. So we're sitting on the plane out here coming out to L.A., and I'm playing uh, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Mm -hmm. And my muscle memory kicked in. I somehow knew how to defeat the first dungeon and all that, and it was mm -hmm. cool. But... The game is actually challenging, and I think that's the reason why Demon Souls and Dark Souls have actually kind of like become a thing lately. Mm -hmm. And no offense to the Call of Duty campaign, but you know my favorite NPC in that game is a guy named Follow, right? Like you're never encouraged to go off the beaten path. You just follow a guy with a giant follow icon the entire time, and that's cool for what that is. But I miss the kind of challenge when games would ask something of players. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, now that you're not at, at Epic anymore, you still are, are, you know, inarguably one of the most fam famous game developers ever. So moving forward, when you start creating your own things again, is being a celebrity going to affect maybe the risk taking that you have moving forward or being in the public eye? I think you have to be careful with that. Um, I think when you look at Ramiro and when he did Ion Storm, I uh -huh. think it worked against him as much as it worked for him. I think you look at Kurt Schilling and his studio. Like, uh, you have to be careful when you have a certain amount of cult of personality. Mm -hmm. You can use it and leverage it to some extent, but you have to be careful to not believe your own crap, honestly. Right. And surround yourself with people who will question you at the right times. You don't want to surround yourself with a lot of yes men, essentially. Sure. Can I mean, no. Yes. <laughs> and when you do make that, that next step, you are going to, I mean, we all hope that you actually do start your own, your own studio. For, for sure, we all hope that. What is going to be the most important part of game design for you? What will be the foundation of your philosophy at your studio? Oh, geez. Um, I mean, when you start a studio, you want to have a philosophy for the overall studio as far as kind of like the pillars of what the studio is founded mm -hmm. on. And then you also want good game design philosophy. Uh, honestly, I just want to create an environment where people can pan for gold. Because, you know, you, it, you, you don't always have the best idea first. You kind of have to trust the process and trust the people in that process. Mm -hmm. And don't self-doubt. Game developers, game designers are so good at second-guessing and questioning each other. Mm -hmm. And I just want to pan for gold while also having faith in the process. Now, uh, if there's a bizarro world, uh, Cliff Lazinski, that didn't actually end up in video games, can, can you see that person and what he'd be doing now? Uh, something in film. Honestly, maybe screenwriting or, or start with director of photography and eventually maybe directing because I, I love video games. I want to make video games, but film is my second love. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't want to get all Kojima on you and have, like, you know, those kinds of visions right there. Um, but I do love movies. Like, it's one of my, you know, things. I just adore them. I think they're an amazing medium. All right, this is a very important question that will definitely earn your respect. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your favorite? Who's your favorite Transformer? Uh, my favorite Transformer. <laughs> well, so my first Transformer was uh, Blue Streak which was later changed to like Silver Streak or something like that, which is the code name of a new IP that I'm gestating on slowly. Mm -hmm. um, and, but of course, it has to actually be Optimus Prime. 
because okay. he was the leader of the Autobots, and he wasn't the kind of leader who hung back and just gave orders. He would go in and kill Decepticreeps himself with his own iron fists, and that's why I loved him. Uh, so we've got to take a quick break, but, but stick around, and you guys stick around, because you're going to see Cliff taking on something a lot more stressful and demanding than developing a big-budget game. Yeah. We're going to make him run the X-Play Challenge. Yes. Find out what happens right after this. Deceptic Creeps, that's awesome. You know when you're nine, you're like, Deceptic Creeps. <laughs> X-Play Mobile Must Haves is presented by LG Optimus G. Here are some must-have apps you can buy with a Google Play gift card. If there's any developer that can do no wrong, it's Rovio. So why stop with Angry Birds when you can also play Bad Piggies? In this offshoot to Rovio's mega franchise, the pigs have become the stars. <laughs> Using a variety of parts, it's up to you to build the right contraption to get them from point A to B. You can download it now from Google Play. <laughs> With two megabytes of RAM and a 4.7 inch true HD IPS display, one lucky viewer today, Matthew Humphrey, will get to experience these games in all their visual glory with his very own LG Optimus G. Congratulations. Welcome back to X-Play. Designer and former G4 correspondent Cliff Lazinski talks a big game, but today we're going to see if he can back it up. Yeah, let's see how he handles the pressure of the X-Play challenge. Here is how the X-Play challenge works. You have to find a job before Cobra runs out in 18 months. <laughs> This is why I'm glad we don't go to the read-throughs, oh, so the jokes are fresh. You actually have to play the original Super Mario Brothers World 1-1 and run the level as fast as you can. No warp pipes and no curb stomping. We're going to place your time on our leaderboard, and Randy Pitchford's time of 21.1 seconds will probably... It's going to be a little hard to beat, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. I have faith. Are you ready? I'm ready. Who's right. ready? Here go we go. In three, two, one. <laughs> Come on over here, come on over here. That's a pretty strong run. Go over here. We have right. 24 seconds even. Oh. With you Ted right and Randy. Below How did he do it? I mean, it's look. not gonna fit. Okay, there we go. Ted and Randy, you know, make games, but you did better than the guy with a face tattoo. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. So you got that going for you, which, fair is, enough. which is super nice. Big round of applause for Cliff, everyone. Thank you. For that run. Thank you so much for coming by. You can find him on Twitter at the real Cliffy B. Or currently unemployed, traveling around the world. You pick. <laughs> After the break, an unbelievable find from the X Play archives. You, you probably don't know Cobra and Mongoose, mm -hmm. but you should. Sort yeah, of it's animation. Gold, yep. and it's coming up right after this. This portion of X Play is brought to you by the quad core powered LG Optimus G. Live without boundaries. Life is a game. But until there's a manual, there is X-Play. Everyone plays X-Play. Weeknights at 6.30, only on G4. I'll be coming for you. Enjoy this power while you have it. Welcome back. It is no secret that X-Play's a little bit low rent. Yeah, that's right. We, we don't really have a health plan. It's more like a staple gun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> gun pretty good at it, though. Yeah. Uh, our animation department 
It's really a guy using paint, not the liquid, the program. Yeah. The program. The free program that yes. comes with old computers. Yep. I don't even know how that's possible. Well, it is, and it happened, and the results were magical. You're dangerous, Cobra. Give me your wings. You're grounded. That's right, Captain. I am dangerous. I'm hit! I'm hit! I'm going down! Pull up, my goose! Pull up! Ah! Oh, God! My goose! <laughs> my goose. Cobra! Cobra, I can't. Ever since Mongoose died, I told myself I couldn't love another flyboy again. I'm not Mongoose. Susie, look at me. I'm not gonna die on you. Oh, oh, Cobra. Oh, Cobra. I was wrong about you, Cobra. You saved the day and the world. Thanks, Captain. Cobra, I'm pregnant. Sorry, baby. I'm in love with the sky. I feel the need, Captain. The, the need for speed. speed. Yeah. I hope you don't mind I knocked up Susie. It's cool. Next week on X-Play, we'll have the latest on Bioshock Infinite, Dead Space 3, and Grand Theft Auto 5. These are 2013's big ones. Plus, the game before the game. We'll eat some wings and tell you who's winning the first ever Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl. And we've got one more batch of X-Play classics. Catch them while you still can. What South Park would have been if Trey and Matt were horny 12-year-olds with money. That's our second to last show. You need to watch or the last one won't make sense. Thanks for watching.